Hi, I'm David, and in this video I want to go through making a track from scratch using audio detection as my starting point for detecting chords um, from an audio loop and then using Scalar to tell me what key and scale I'm in and also then offering me a bunch of variation and suggestions on those chords. Um, often I will start with either myself playing chords or detecting MIDI chords, which is always 100% because it's just data. You're just kind of really looking at a bunch of notes and MIDI files, which Scale is always going to give you 100% accurate detection of. Using audio is different because it's so dependent upon the audio file, um, but Scalar always gives me a really good reference point to kind of have an idea of what key and scale the tune is in and what chords the loop is using. So here I use audio detection. It does a really good job of telling me what chords are part of that loop, and it helps me build upon that chords to build upon those chords to flush out a really nice chord progression and make a tune. In this instance here, I've got a tune that I want to make, um, or let's just say I like this loop, which I do. It's a, a lovely little synth chord loop from Loop Masters as Excellent Catching Flies sample pack. So here, here's the actual loop. Same chords, just kind of you know, filtering open and filtering back closed. Now, um, I want to write a tune around that and I need Scalar to help me recognize the chords and give me some chords that will go with it, basically. So in this instance, it's an audio file, obviously. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up Scalar Audio. Um, and Scalar Audio is specifically designed to um, read audio files. Now, I can drag that audio file straight in, but what I'm going to do, since it's live on the channel, I'm going to detect it. So, uh, when I play in, you can see that the threshold's not quite um, being reached. So, I just need to pull Scalar's threshold down a little bit to make sure it does uh, recognize the, the volume there. So, if I hit record, I'm going to see how it goes on recognizing those chords. Yep, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I think it looks good. Let's have a listen. What I, what I can do is I can play over the top just to see uh, how well the chords, Scalar's chords have matched. So let's have a listen and see how it sounds. Great. It, it sounds like they're the right chords. There might be a couple of notes that are kind of inverted, um, but I like the sound of that, so that's good enough. It's telling me instantly the scales that it could be in. Um, if I look at the major and the minor scales, um, uh, I'm going to select F minor. It seems the most straightforward. I like writing in a minor scale, so that's fine. Um, and what I'll do is I'll, I'm going to now move those chords to section C, not for the purpose of playing them from Scalar Audio, but for the purpose of introducing some Scalar instruments and playing playing those chords. So what I might do is I might um, uh, start or create a new instrument track, Scalar 2 is on it, and whilst I'm on this original Scalar, I might say, okay, can we live sync that? Um, and if I start the live sync, it'll effectively just, um, if I close that down and open the new scaler here that I've just opened and live synced to, you can see that the chords are here. So that's cool. That's on its own instrument now. So I can begin to play that on top of, I might uh, just call up a synth, internal synth patch from scaler, Celestial Existence. Let's see how these chords sound over the top. Cool, that's great. Uh, I want them to be voiced a little bit different, to be kind of a little bit lower. So if I grab all of those chords, right click, and I just say detect, it'll come up again. It'll detect those four chords there, and it'll say these are the scales you could be in. And I've decided I'm gonna I'm gonna work in F minor. Now what I have is I have uh, not only the standard chords which already are fitting in. So if I was to follow that, you know, D flat major F minor. Um, 
It doesn't have a, a B flat sus2. Um, I won't get into that, but I can find that. Let's just say I don't know my theory so well. It does have the D flat major. And this is where I can start saying, okay, uh, cool, I could follow, I could use the diatonics, that's these ones. That's not quite right because that's a B flat minor, so I'm going to need a sus2. But this is where I could say, okay, I could go to the extensions menu and say, okay, what would seventh sound like? So if I play the... Yeah, that's right, again, but the diatonics work in order of the fact that F minor is the lowest and it's going up. So I'm going to go voicings, and what voicings is, is voicings is some really cool way to voice those chords so they don't sound like the standard diatonics or the three notes from those chords. And this is where voicings really cool because they're artist's interpretation of how those chords might be played. And think of them as like a family of chords. So I'm going to try and follow that and say, okay, let's go. Um, so that, that sounded good to me. I don't have that B flat sus two, so I might get some help. That sounds really good. I like those. So from voicing one, I'm going to say, let's use that D flat major. Let's use that F flat, uh, that F minor. And let's go again. Obviously, we, we come back on the D flat major. So let's go again there. Um, what I'm going to need is I'm going to need a version of this, a, the B flat sus2. So here's the B flat minor, and this is where variations come in. I can say, oh, can you give me all the chords um, in the key of B flat, if you like? And here they are. And obviously, it's given me all the B flat variations. Um, and I'm going to say, okay, um, well, there's a sus2. Yeah, so that's a different version because it's voiced differently, so that's fine. I'm going to pull that in. Okay, so now with the help of going to the Voicing One menu and this, the Variations menu, I've been able to find the chords that uh, loosely match the original detected chord, but because I've been able to and I'll, and I'll go through different voicings menus in a minute. I've been able to make up ones that sound kind of more part of the tune or a voice differently. Yeah, that sounds really, really good. I quite like that. Just so I don't kind of finish and end up at exactly the same chord, I might have a look at a different voicing menu. I might go uh, to voicings two and... Yeah, that D flat major is definitely different to this one. So that sounds good. I'm going to pull that in. Let's see how this sounds. Yeah, that sounds good. It sounds like it's growing and kind of enriching in, in harmonies. As the audio file obviously is a little bit longer, I can try and not just use the same four chords. I can try and spice that up a little bit so it feels like the the chord progression is building, which is a really cool way because the original sample has the same four chords and it's whilst it's modulating filter, the actual notes are the same. But I'm going to try and change it around whilst using the same chords and that's where voicings and variations can be really cool. So what I'll do is I'll, to spice it up, these were from voicing one, but now whilst I'm in voicing two, I'm going to pull that D flat major in again and I'm actually going to use this F minor. So this one here was from voicing one. And let's listen to the one from voicing two. It's definitely different, so that sounds like it might move somewhere. So I'll pull that in. Cool. And again, rather than go from that, use that same B flat sus two, I might come into variations and go, was well, there any other suspended chords? And there was that one. And there's also this one. So that, that seems to um, work. So I'm going to pull it across. And now I'm in a, I want to finish somewhere. Let's say potentially finish somewhere strong so or stronger. So I'm going to go into voicing. Let's go to the next one, voicings three. And let's have a look at finishing on a different uh, D flat major. So here we had one from voicing one, a D flat major from voicing two. And let's hear what this D flat major from voicing three sounds like. I think that that sounds like it's going somewhere. So I'm going to pull that in. And now I'm going to just play along with these chords and see whether they're working with the original file. Mm -hmm. 
That's that's sounding really nice to me. It's sounding like it's it's feeling like it's building. So the original chords and these chords is kind of harmonizing it and growing, which is really nice. Let's hear Scalar on its own just for a second. Scalar with its internal sounds. Yeah, that's really cool. So obviously I can just write those notes in. Let me just quickly write those notes in, the trigger notes to follow that. So I'm going to click on the bind and I'll write those trigger notes in. Okay, so I've written those trigger notes in, just trigger C, D, E, F, G, A, B, which as you know in Scalar is going to trigger, is going to trigger um, those chords. So let's see how we go. Um, Okay, so it's worked really nicely. It's helped me detect what chords are there. It's helped me choose a scale. And now it's really allowing me to, to write these nice kind of extended chords using the variations and the voicings. Why don't I take the opportunity to make a different B section, if you like? So um, what I'll do is I'm going gonna, gonna to open this scaler here again. And I'm going to, I've got one pattern there. I'm going to duplicate, duplicate that pattern. So basically I've got another copy of it, if you like. Now it's going to be triggering these chords. Whilst it just does that, I'm going to mute the trigger chords because I don't want to hear it being triggered. And for pattern two, I want to end up at four different chords. So rather than have exactly the same um, chords because the, in pattern one, we've got the eight chords all progressing. Now we're going to go in pattern two, we're going to go back to the first four chords, but I want to end up somewhere different. So what I might do is this might be a good opportunity for me to use suggest mode. So if I click on suggest mode and why don't, I'll stick with this D flat major. Let's end up with the, let's finish up with three new chords. And if I click on the little flag up the top right hand side, it's going to basically take that whole chord progression into account and suggest chords to launch from here. So effectively replace these guys. Normally I like to go tonal because it just finds notes that match that progression. It doesn't really take into account the scale notes. So it enables you to come up with really totally unique chord progressions that don't necessarily belong to scale. That's really cool. But now I, I do want to stick to that F minor. So I'm actually going to hit per scale as in really recommend me chords that will fit with that scale. And because I've, I've already got my voicing kind of nicely set, I'm going to say, can you minimize the movement? So don't jump me around too much. Um, so if I go from here, I was going to go to an F minor, so yeah, so it's actually suggesting an F minor over C. Cool, it's different. I'm going to try it. I'm going to pull it in and let's suggest, now let's suggest from that F flat minor. Now I was on a B flat sus4, so let's see what it suggests to me. Um, I could kind of play over the top, shall I, and see where I could go. But suddenly I'm seeing a few different things here. So I could kind of say, well, you know, do we go from here into here? I mean, this, that C sus4 sounds right. Does it work? Let me play along with these chords and then trigger up here and just see if it works. Yeah, that actually sounded really nice. You know, if I don't know my theory, I'm not sure it's correct. We were saying that we were using a B flat sus4, but that C sus4 definitely worked. And now I'm going to suggest from there. So now it's taking all of the chords into consideration and saying this is where you could end up. I want to end up on a D flat major. And I might even, maybe even to give me some more variety, I might suggest, well, going from a D flat major seventh, just to experiment, where could you end up? And it's okay, it's saying a D flat major added 13th. So that sounds like a big chord. 
Sounds good. Let's just check. Let's play these first seven chords and let's end up there and let's see if that works. Yeah, that sounded really good. That found it, sounded quite conclusive but big. So I'm going to pull it in. So that, that was really cool. So basically by using per scale and minimized movement, it, it enabled me to really do a big variation. So effectively pattern one now, I used voicing one, two, and three, and the variations to help me kind of find chords that work with what look like the chords it detected. I played over top of the original file, sounded great. Um, and now I want to switch between pattern two. Now I could modulate or automate, I should say. I could double click here, create a commands mapping. But for this summary, we haven't really gone there yet. So I won't do that. To make it easy, um, I'm going to leave this one on pattern one. So these, these chords here are triggering pattern one. So I'm going to unmute that region so that we'll play the first eight chords. Now I want to play pattern two, and just to demonstrate it very clearly, I'm going to duplicate this scalar here, and I'm going to say, okay, for the first one, stay on pattern, pattern two, and then I'm going to open up the new scalar that I just um, duplicated across and say, play on this one, play pattern two. So that one, if you like, is playing, you know, scalar pattern one, and uh, this one's, um, playing scalar pattern two. And I'm just going to be fussy and just fix that up and go pattern with an N. Um, now if I close both those scalars, I think you guess what I want to do here. I want to just move these chords around so it's triggering that second scalar. So what we have is the scalar pattern one that I created and scalar pattern two that I created with the last three chords being very different according to suggest mode. So let's see how that all sounds together. Pattern two. Yeah, cool. So that it sounds like I've, I've really got something that has built nicely across both those patterns. Um, and really I've got, I don't know how many without thinking, but I've probably got, whilst they're all, virtually the same chords that practically all voice differently. So I've got at least 12 unique chords, all because I got Scalar to detect those original chords up the top. Um, and then I just looked at the naming convention, went into voicing three, voicing one, voicing two, found alternatives. And then when I couldn't see that B flat sus two, I went into variations and I chose the subdominant B flat and it showed me all the possible chords that are made up from B flat and there they were there was a couple of susses um, so what's really cool about this I'm just going to quickly fast forward to um, a track that I made using just those three instruments there and then I added some bits and what's really nice is now that I know I'm in F minor definitely I can just start bringing up external third-party instruments okay as the chefs would say here's one I prepared earlier so um, it's exactly the same as what I had, but now I've just added a bunch of stuff and I want to show you what that is and how I got to doing that. So as we know, that is our chord progression. Um, and with pattern one and pattern two with the variations of all those chords. Um, and basically what I, if I um, hide, I'm going to hide the original scalar audio detection and what you can see here is I've added some drums. I just went back to the Catching um, Flies Loopmaster sample pack where I got the chord from. Thought that was cool. They'd probably have some beats to match. Made a couple of little quick edits. Um, came up with these beats and just did some kind of crash, reverse delay and trickery. All very straightforward. Uh, that should go well nicely with the tune.
Yeah, cool. And Scale has done a really, really good job of extending those those chords, if you like. Um, as you can see, I've just duplicated what we had before because when I'm making a tune, I really like to always think of having an A and B right to start with. Otherwise, a really easy way to get caught in that loop that you can never get out of. So by having a variation, it makes me feel like it's going somewhere and really helps me that when I've got the the alternating sections right, it's really easy to flush or pad out a tune. Um, the rest of what I did was actually very easy. Um, the first thing I did was I pulled up Output's um, Exhale Vocal Pack, if you like, and all I literally did was I just opened Exhale, I clicked on Slices because, you know, it being kind of future bassy, if you like, um, in its genre, I'm looking for those pitched up sliced vocals. So I've, I've chosen Slices, I found, I went through a bunch of presets, I liked to slow it down, I had some kind of nice sounds to it. Sorry, I'll unmute that. Um, uh, yeah, I had those kind of nice high pitch sounds. And I and I literally just went, well, Scalar's told me I'm in F minor, so I clicked on F minor to make sure that's where I was. And you can see that on its own, I'm just playing three notes, um, three notes and repeating that three notes and ending up with a fourth note. You can see it here. No, it repeats those three notes and ends up with that kind of yeah yeah um, and because I'm in F minor I like the sound of that it should go with the chords let's have a listen Sounds right to me. Um, and then what I've done is, in a very similar way, I've pulled up output Outputs Arcade, which you often see me do in my little videos, and I've gone Future Perfect. That sounds like the genre that I'm kind of playing in. I've pulled up one of their presets. I think it's the first one, Wish You Could Stay. I've told it I'm in F minor, and then I've listened to a couple of sounds. And I thought, well, they'll all work. And all I'm literally doing is I'm just playing this one. You can see it here, just one note. Here we go. And if I bring the vocal in as well. Yep, it's all working well. Um, and now to tie it all in together, I really need a bass line. So I've pulled up Serum and I've just literally have written single notes. I've gone back to Scalar and I've said, what what notes were my chords based in? Um, it's pretty self-explanatory there. D flat, F, um, B flat, D flat. Um, and I've just written those, those, those bass notes um, and I've come up with... Yeah, that kind of very straightforward sound. I really like it because it always feels like it's growing. Um, now, the B section, it's exactly the same. I've just duplicated it and you can see that I've actually deleted that arcade melody and deleted the exhale vocal. So all I'm left with is the scalar chords, the original chord loop and the bass line for the second. And what I've done is I've just automated a side chain to kick in to kind of give me that, you know, that movement for the second half. It's literally all it's done. Let's have a listen. I think it works nicely. Let's have a listen to the A and B all together with the side chain kicking in for this section, section which gives me my my A and B or my alternating sections, if you like. Into the second section.
Yeah, I think it's a really good example of how I use Scala to really help me um, come up with an idea based on something I really like. So often it's hard to just come up with chords. And of course, just to start with chords is, is what really Scala can help you because there's literally thousands of different chord progressions within Scala that can get you going. But sometimes I like to get an authentic feel of it genre or style and that's what the catching flies synth chord loop gave me it just gave me a little feel or a little direction if you like and the first thing i needed to know is well I, i'm not you know there's there's guys here at samplify that can just come in and go yeah that's a b flat sus with the second there but that inverted i'm not that person um, and i need help and really that's why i really wanted scalar to, to be um and it did that. It just gave me those chords. It told me the scales I could be in. I then used my limited knowledge to say, okay, I'm just looking at what matches. Let's get some variations on those chords so we're not using the standard diatonic chords. I've gone to the voicings, which are ones that the artists around here have created to say, well, they're the same chords, but this is how they all might work together in one tune. I've mixed and matched. When I couldn't find something within those voicings i went into variations i went oh b flat sus is there a sus two suspended chords yes there they are and then i finally i went into suggest mode and said can you help me find some further ones outside of the voicings and the variations and and therein lies the the power of not just using chords that are within Scalar, but variations based upon what you're doing i could have started with my own chord progression i didn't need an audio file um, and Scalar could have detected me. But I think it's a really good example of how sometimes I can just get, you know, rid of that, what am I going to do, what emotion am I going for, and just help Scalar just flush out some really, really nice chords. And I think more importantly, what I'm not doing is I'm not just going around the same four chords. I'm going through a, a all-new progression that really feels like it's going somewhere. Um, so that's how I use all of those features in a very simple demonstrative way. Hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching.